Hey, it's seventh graders, Mrs. Sherry, and I thought I would make a screencast to wrap up the rest of these notes so we can move on to some other ones when we're together again. Um, so just a quick recap, um, rational numbers, it's got the word ratio in it, so remember how you can write ratios, and that includes a fraction. So any number you can write as a fraction is a rational number. Also decimals, but that includes positives and negatives. That includes ones that are in lowest terms and ones that are not. Um, that includes repeating decimals. Here's another one that's not in lowest terms. Um, and remember that you can, if you can write the number as a fraction, so that eight is a rational number because you can write eight over one. Or um, 16 over two also is equivalent to eight. So eight's a rational number. So here, you're putting together all what you know about your fractions and decimals from previous years of math, and then we're going to add that together with your integers knowledge. So you're going to just be even more awesome after you go through this. So we went through just rational numbers in general, ratio, we talked about writing them as a fraction, so a over b, where a and b are integers, but remember b can't be zero. We can't have the denominator being zero or divide by zero. We talked about the difference between terminating and repeating decimals. We talked about bar notation, showing when things are repeating, and the vinculum is the name of that little bar. One more little um, kind of pictogram here to show you about groups of numbers. We talked about the top and the box trick so that you know the top number is the one that goes inside when you're dividing so you don't accidentally do it backwards. Um, again, top and the box, <clears throat> and you've got the choice to make that into an improper fraction, the whole thing, or I would just take that two and just bring the two to my answer box and then know that it's two point, and I would just figure out what five six would be, but both ways work. And we did these examples together. If by chance you don't have them, just pause the video and you can get those in your interactive notebook. Here was part of our um, talking about the improper fraction, two and five sixths, and how two times six is 12 plus five is 17 and how that actually works. So here's one whole divided into six, another whole divided into six. So that's those the two. And then the five six, five of these six. So there's six six here, six more six, and five, and that gives us 17, which is the same as the shortcut. The whole number times the denominator, and then add the numerator. That's why that trick works. <coughs> then we talked about adding rational numbers, and um, for your yes no flaps are still. Um, usable here. So adding same sign, so this is where you add them and you find the sum of their absolute values and y'all are aware of what that is and then you keep the sign of the larger absolute value. That's the, um, or actually you add them, sorry, you add them and keep their signs. So they're both positive or both negative. So whichever the, both, the two numbers are, your answer is. So two negatives give you a negative, two positive gives you a positive. When they are different signs, this is the same as your no flap, where you subtract them and see who wins. So find the difference of their absolute values, and then the greater rational number's absolute value, whatever that sign is. That's the see who wins. Um, then we did these problems together, and if you, for some reason, don't have those, you can pause the video and add those in to your notes. I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see what we wrote here. So you can just pause if you need to, and down there in the bottom and right, white, excuse me, was where I wrote the problem there. Okay. So subtracting rational numbers we talked about, and this is just like your same rules when subtracting integers. So you need to take your knowledge of subtracting fractions and mixed numbers, subtracting decimals, and then put that with your subtracting of integers. 
To find the opposite, you just change the sign of the number, so either positive to negative or negative to positive. You still will do the keep change change, just like you always have with your integers. Um, we know about distance is absolute value. Um, those two go right together. Distance from zero is absolute value, so that's why it's always positive. And to find the distance between any two numbers on a number line, it's the difference of the absolute, or the absolute value of the difference, excuse me. So the absolute value symbols of the difference because distance is always positive. Then for the practice problems, um, we did keep change change on all of them because they all were subtracting. We added the opposite. And then we added decimals. We um, had to subtract here because the signs were different. It was a no. And we had to add here because it was a yes. They both were negative. So be careful that you actually bring that sign down to the answer. I try to put that down in my answer box right away. Um, we talked about finding how many ninths three is in the problems. And so saying how many ninths is equal to three, or three is equal to how many ninths. And that's the same as saying what divided by nine equals three. And remember on our previous classes, we would multiply on the diagonal, so 27, and that makes sense, 27 divided by nine equals three. So that would be 27 ninths is equal to three. Sometimes you'll need to change a whole number or an integer into a fraction when you're adding or subtracting. Okay, next then, multiplying and then dividing to finish th this up. So your tic-tac-toe trick and your triangle trick still work. And you'll just now follow the rules for multiplying decimals and multiplying fractions. So what you've already done, we're just putting those two together. So multiplying numbers with the same sign, we know that same sign is positive. So here's same sign is positive. And then remember, that's when taking them two at a time. If you're multiplying five negative numbers, they all have the same sign. That does not make a positive answer. It's taking two numbers at a time. And then different signs give you a negative answer. And again, that's taking them two at a time. So if you're doing two positives and two negatives, you're going to have um, positive answer because the two negatives make a positive. So just because the signs are different in the problem, that doesn't determine your outcome. It's taking them two at a time. And remember, you can still use your tic-tac-toe trick or your triangle trick. So to practice, um, I always like multiplying and dividing fractions better than adding and subtracting them because you don't need a common denominator. And I like that. It makes it be a little faster. So let's zoom in on example number one. And you simply look at what we've got here. Um, we've got two negatives negative six-sevenths times negative five-halves. So our answer is going to be positive. So I'm putting my answer box here, and I don't have to put a sign in there because we know that we have our signs being positive. You don't put one, only for negative. So six times five, we just multiply straight across the top. Six times five is 30. Seven times two is 14. And both numbers are even. So here's an example, again, of where those divisibility rules come in very handy the whole rest of the school year. So if we divide them each by 2, then we would have 15 over 7. And 7 is prime, so for sure nothing can go into that. And if we top in the box, 15 inside, 7 outside. That goes in there twice. Two times seven is 14. Subtract, and we get one. So two and one 
seventh. If you would have done top in the box with 30 over 14, you'd get the same answer, just that you would get two and two fourteenths and have to put it in lowest terms afterwards. So you, it's okay to divide the bigger numbers as well. But two negatives, so we have a positive result. For example, two, here they're showing us two times negative three-fourths. So when we set that up, two times negative 3.4, negative three and four tenths, um, it's better to put the longer number, whether just whatever one has more digits, on top, because that's how you're used to multiplying. And we can see here we've got a positive and a negative. So if we cross off a positive and a negative, we know our answer is going to be negative. So four times two is eight. And three times two is six. And we've got one decimal place altogether. So we're gonna move in here, one decimal place. So negative 6.8 would be our answer for that one. Example three, this means negative two point two, excuse me, negative two fifths squared. And remember squared means repeated multiplication. So this number times itself and two, it's twice, two of them. So that's the same thing as negative two fifths times negative two fifths. Or, that's not a very good five, is it? Let's try that again. There we go. Or, here's another little trick. It's the same as um, the two. We can square the two and square the five. And remember how a negative out in front, you can make the top number, the numerator negative, or the bottom. It doesn't matter. So we know we're taking a negative times a negative, and so we know our answer is going to be positive because that negative is inside the parentheses. So negative two times negative two is four, and five times five is 25, and that's our answer. Um, if you wanna leave this out, you really could because we know overall we're doing a negative times a negative, so we know our answer is positive. But two times two is four, five times five is 25. And then the real world example here with our cell phone company was overcharging us, darn them. They're going to add, so pay attention here, add a negative $3.85 to your next bill for each of the next five months. How much will be added to your next bill? Well, adding a negative is the same as subtracting a positive. So they're adding a credit to your bill. So adding a negative to your bill, that's a good thing. So for each of the five months, so that's telling you that we are multiplying by five. So five times negative 3.85. And again, since the 3.85 has more digits, I'm gonna put that one on top, times five. And five times five is 25. Eight times five is 40, plus two is 42. Five times three is 15, plus four more is 19. And since we've got two decimal places total here, because the five doesn't have any, then we're gonna scoot in two decimal places here. 
And of course, we need a label. A real world problem needs a real world label. And if we're adding those credits, remember that it's negative $19.25. So that sounds pretty good. However, you got overcharged to begin with, so at least they're just evening that out for you. Um, if you missed anything, feel free to rewind and go back, um, add to your notes. And dividing, so again, your tic-tac-toe and your triangle method still work, and you're looking at dividing. So again, the dividing rational numbers with the same sign, and that's two at a time, so the quotient of two rational numbers is positive if they are having the same sign. And quotient, answer in a division problem, that's one of our vocabulary words. Quotient, rational numbers. Um, dividing with different signs, then you get negative. So same sign, positive, different sign, oh, I should put that in red, different sign, negative. And again, that's when you take them two at a time, two at a time. Um, a complex fraction, this is probably something a little new to you, so definitely make sure you're adding this to um, your notes or doing some examples of it, paying close attention. A complex fraction, another vocabulary word, so if you're keeping a separate vocabulary page, I would add that in there. A fraction that has a fraction in its numerator, denominator, or both. So you could have one half divided by seven, that's a complex fraction, a fraction that has a fraction. Um, five over two thirds, so just a fraction in the denominator, or the example here where we've got two fractions. We've got a fraction as the numerator and the denominator. So remember, the fraction bar means division. So let me get rid of this a little bit here so we can see. The three-fifths divided by one-half. So you can change a complex fraction into a division problem. Three-fifths divided by one-half. Three-fifths divided by one-half. And then, just like kind of we add the opposite when we are subtracting, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're, it's kind of another keep, change, change situation. Keep this fraction the same or number, change this to multiplication, and change this to the reciprocal or multiplicative inverse, like add the opposite, the inverse. We're going to multiply by the inverse. So for example one, if we have 8 divided by negative 4 thirds, that's the same as 8 times negative 3 fourths. Remember, you can always put 1 under any number to make it be a fraction. And so then we are going to multiply straight across. So 8 times 3 is 24. 1 times 4 is 4. And then one of those was negative, so we know that our answer is going to be negative. And negative 24 divided by 4 is negative 6. And then number 2 is just like our example of the complex fraction. That Remember, this means divided by. So negative 2 thirds divided by negative 5 sixths. Well, we've got two negatives, so we know that our answer is going to be positive. So we can just focus on the number. So two-thirds times, so keep the two-thirds, change, change. So change this to multiplication and change this to the reciprocal, which is just inverting our fraction. So instead of 5 over 6, we're going to have 6 over 5. And I know some of you like to 
um, simplify beforehand. If we've got a 3 and 6, we can simplify that. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then if we multiply straight across, 2 times 2 is 4, and 5 times 1 is 5. And checking our sign, a negative times a negative is a positive, so we leave that as positive. And our real world problem, um, we've got a backyard water pail problem here. And so it's telling us a water pail in your backyard has a small hole in it. Darn it. You notice that it's drained a total of 2.5 liters in five days. Two liters, that's those large bottles of soda, a two liter of soda. So 2.5 liters, so a little bit bigger than one of those. It's drained that much in five days. What's the average change in water volume each day? Remember average, you should definitely highlight that one. And average or mean, that should be another vocabulary word that you've got, and that's one of the words on our back cupboard. The average, and if it's draining, then we are losing water, right? So it's a loss. So how much did it drain each day? Well, an average, 2.5 liters in five days. So 2.5 liters per, fraction bars can also say the word per, um, five days. Kind of like if you say 75 miles per hour, that's the same as 75 miles per one hour. So per can be your fraction bar too. So we're going to do 2.5 divided by 5. Top in the box, so 2.5 goes on the inside. Put up your decimal point right away so you don't forget that. 5 doesn't go into 2, but 5 goes into 25 5 times, which is 25. And so we get 0 0.5. So what was the average change? Well, since we lost 0 0.5, liters per day. You could write out the word per if you want to, but since we lost, then we'll have that be negative. So there you go. The complex fraction, don't let that freak you out. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? If you first write it as a division problem, then it makes it so much easier to solve because certainly a division problem doesn't make you panicky. So again, if you need to um, go back and look at any of these parts, please do. Remember that, again, we are combining our knowledge of integers with your previous knowledge of rational numbers, which I'm sure you just called fractions and decimals. So you're just putting two things together that you know. Um, remember, at least for now, we kind of talked to that maybe 30 minutes seem to go so fast for math class that I'll see maybe if I can somehow lengthen that, if I can find a time. But for right now, um, on school days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10.30 for math class, Tuesday and Thursday, 10.30 for math open office hours, and come in if you have a question, but if you're feeling lonely and just need to come and say hi, I'm fine with that too. You might just need to wait while I'm helping someone with math. And then if you're in my homeroom, you should come at 11 on Mondays after um, math class for homeroom check-in. So, math rocks and so do you. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you later.